Good morning and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. This very beautiful Friday uh, morning, the 2nd of April 2021. Good morning to you, Good morning Osawage. to you. It's a public holiday, uh, but we don't get to experience uh, such Sadly. because we have to work all through, you know. So we hope that, you know, you're spending your public holidays at home, resting, enjoying the, you know, the Friday here in Lagos and across Nigeria and anywhere that you might be watching us uh, from uh, this morning. Welcome to the breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. There's so much interesting stuff that we will be talking about today. Yes, and coming up on the breakfast, a conversation with the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatsunde Fashola, about the Highway Development and Maintenance Initiative. It's the federal government's plan to concession 12 highways in a public-private partnership. Find out how this affects you. And also, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Isa Pantami, says persons who fail to obtain the national identification number risk fines or oh, jail term. Is this backed by law? We'll be finding out from an analyst today on the program. And also coming up on The Breakfast, a United States report brings back memories of the NSARS protest and pits pro-protesters against anti-protesters. That report is now being faulted by Amnesty International. And also, G.D. Johnson will be joining us to review the dailies in Off the Press. It's where we have a quick review of the major news stories across Nigeria this Friday morning. It looks like it's going to be very interesting. Indeed. And later on the show, Wally Scott will be here to talk sports. Welcome again to The Breakfast. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogboa. Um, once again, uh, let's uh, see how much excitement we can bring into this uh, Friday morning. Mm -hmm. We normally would start with the top trending stories you yes. know, across the world. I, I you know, follow up from something we spoke about yesterday. Um, Pastor Chris and his uh, getting fined by uh, UK, the UK um, uh, government for statements he made with regards to COVID-19. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how many people also got to see um, the second Pastor Chris, uh, this time a courtier, mm. um, and a short video where he spoke about uh, the vaccine, <laughs> you know, which is likely to turn you into a vampire <laughs> and make you want to, uh, you know, continue to search for blood. You know, that was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever seen. And because I understand how, you know, new media works, evolution of, you know, technology, I look closely at that video for any clues if this might be a deep fake, that when it's your face, it seems like you're speaking, but you're yeah. actually not the one speaking. I zoomed like in the, close like on that video. Like video. Exactly. I zoomed well, in so close yeah. on that video to try to pick up, you know, refer back to my training on how to spot deep fakes. I couldn't spot that. So does that mean... That's a pastor who leads a congregation of thousands of people actually said that the COVID-19 vaccine would make you become like a vampire and make you crave for blood. Isn't that just ridiculous? Oh, we need to find out what technology was used in making that video. Wow. Uh, uh, if like, it was a deep uh, fake. Yes, just... The worst like, they would do uh, is deny it, but you know these They can't say governor's video. Oh, that one. Yeah, that one. <laughs> anyway, so we're beginning with top stories this morning. And, uh, you know, we'll start with this one. A Nigerian Air Force fighter jet has gone missing after losing contact with uh, radar in Borno State. It happened on Wednesday, but we only got to know yesterday after the spokesperson for the Nigerian Air Force, Edward uh, Gapquet, made a public statement. He said the Alpha Jet lost contact while on the interdiction mission in support of ground troops in the counterinsurgency operations in the Northeast. It's coming just weeks after another Air Force aircraft crashed in Niger State, killing all on board. Um, and, you know, that one, you know, is still creating mm. conversations across the country. Um, you know, there's mixed reactions. You know, there's the conspiracy theorists. There's the ones who, of course, are very concerned about the uh, pilots and the, you know, Nigerian um, Air Force members, um, yes. uh, crew members, you know, and, of course, being concerned and hoping that they be um, rescued and they be found, you know, and brought back home. Uh, these are things that you can never really predict and you can never really expect. And so when they happen, you hope for the best possible outcome. Aside mm -hmm. Nigeria losing yet, or the possibility of Nigeria losing yet another aircraft mm -hmm. and, you know, reducing the number of, you know, planes that we have on our fleet to fight, you know, the, these insurgents. Things that are very expensive. Very expensive way. and takes a long time before we can buy any. You know, I remember, you know, when we talk about Tucano jets, it takes, you know, yes. decades before, you know, one final, not decades though. Um, so aside, you know, that part, you know, it's also a huge concern um, and prayers for the families and for those pilots and hope that they are somewhere safe mm -hmm. and they will be found. 
Um, I don't know how large Burno State is. You know, that makes it difficult for a, a jet, you know, which may have crashed to be found. Um, I, can't ex I can't explain, you know, how it may have disappeared, you know, maybe, be, you, know, um, you know, out of Nigeria's airspace, um, and that's why it might be difficult for it to be found. No, I mean, it, has, it makes absolutely no sense, you know, and there's no large, you know, water body in Borneo State, you know, just like MH370 mm -hmm. that you might assume it is somewhere under the water. Um, so we, we continue to hope for the best outcome out of, out of this uh, particular story. Indeed, Osaoge, when I saw this news about a you know, plane from the Nigerian Air Force you know, going missing in Bono State, and that this happened at around 5.08 p.m. on Wednesday, March 31st, I was really saddened because just a few weeks ago, we were mourning with the families of our seven personnel of the Nigerian Air Force who had you know, lost their lives due to that crash in Niger State. They had gone out to try to find a way to end insurgency, and that happened. And now this disappearance of these aircraft. But you know, I found that really, looking back into history, there's been reports of mysterious disappearances of air airplanes from as far back as in 1940s. You have mysterious disappearances. There was one particular one in the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle, about six planes disappeared. You know, planes disappearing from the United States Air, air Force, the Indian Air Force, Uruguay, several other countries. This, this has happened so many times in history. The planes just vanish off the radar. They lose contact with the tower and, and that's it. For years and years and years, you know, I, uh, you know along, the planes are yet to be found. And for Nigeria, even though we, we can understand that things like this happen, we've seen them happen over time in history, there's also the Nigerian factor that people will bring speculations into play and say, when we talk about you know, Air Force fighters or Air Force jets bringing supplies to Boko Haram, maybe this is one. I've seen things, yeah. people are wilding out there, it, you know, it, but we can only hope that the search and rescue efforts, you know, come through and we find these people in one piece. Yeah, it, 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 because of, you know, the peculiarities of our, you know, situation with regards to fight against insurgency mm -hmm. and uh, a lack of trust, you know, there's, there's still that trust deficit between yes. the Nigerian people and the government. Um, and so it creates room for conspiracy theories and mm -hmm. for speculations. Sure. You know, as long as there's that room, uh, it will be filled up with whatever narratives that anybody wants to, to you know, to create. Yeah. And so what we hope for is, once again, the best outcome, you know, and that is that the plane is found, mm -hmm. that the pilots are found alive, and they, you know, be reunited with, you know, with, you know, the rest yeah. of the country and their families. Um, you know, once again, you know, you, you spoke about Bermuda Triangle and, you know, play, planes get missing. MH370 for me has, has to be the most, you know, um, you know mysterious one. Um, mm. And uh, till date, we still haven't, the world still hasn't been able to identify or to know anything about that plane's disappearance. Um, but we, you know, from those investigations, you know, it is assumed that maybe, you know, it's somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea or some, in some one of, of those oceans. But in Borneo State, you know, there is no water body that big that you can assume that a plane has fallen in the water. And, and a except, plane crash is yet to be reported. So it's, it's yeah, really mysterious. Exactly. So, you know, now there's more room for speculation that maybe, you know, the radar was turned off if that's possible. Maybe it has been, you know, flown to a totally different country entirely. And it, nobody has, you know, the, the you know, slightest idea. Um, mm -hmm. um, how, how many of those of the Boko Haram anti-aircraft, you know, guns can reach a fighter jet? Um, I, I really don't know. Uh, we would, of course, hope that the Nigerian Air Force uh, does its, you know, absolute best to, you know, find that plane and find those pilots and bring them back home. And of course, we'll follow up on that story and share with, you know, everyone um, whenever there's updates on it. Let's now move to another issue. Top trending, a plan by some Nigerians to shame President Muhammadu Buhari in London. Reno Mokri, an aide to former President Goodluck Jonathan, is one of the promoters of the campaign tagged Harass Buhari Out of Office. Take a look at this tweet. He says, do something for Nigeria. Don't just wait for Nigeria to do something for you. Join me 12 noon tomorrow, and that's, that, that should be today, at Abuja House to Camden Hill, Kessington, W87AD to harass Buhari out of London. He went on to say President Muhammad Buhari destroyed our health sector and killed NSAS protesters and let him return to Nigeria.
Well, I don't know about destroying our health sector. Um, I think that you know the the, the Nigeria's health you know system has been you know in shambles for a long time. Mm. Um, it's a, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a very bad history. Yeah, it, it's really about what has been done in the time that he is you know been president and what moves have been made to fix and to improve on the on the health sector. You know, and you you know we spoke about this I think yesterday or two days ago. You can't really stop people from finding you know this wrong or from criticizing this move. Um, if you're going for a health checkup, if you're going for, um, you know, just something as, as, you know, has been described, you know, as, as little as a, you know, regular medical checkup, there is a possibility of having those doctors come to Nigeria to treat you. There's a possibility also of having, you know, the uh, um, Astro Clinic doctors also treat you. Um, you know, the president has been going to the UK for this health checkup even before he was president. Um, since b prior to 2015, he has been going. And so... In five years, you know, don't you think that maybe we should have been able to, you know, set up the Asarok Clinic or set up any hospital in the whole of Nigeria to be able to attend to his, to his needs? And, and it now also creates questions about what exactly is the health challenge of President Muhammad Dubari. If it is not something that can be treated in Asarok <laughs> Clinic, if it's not something that we have the, you know, equipment, the medical equipment to um, assess and to monitor in Asarok Clinic, then what exactly is it? You know, are you running a full check, you know, just to see that he is still mm -hmm. completely healthy? Can't that be done in Asarok Clinic? And don't they care about how it makes the government look if five or get into yeah. six years after being, you know, in, in, in office, there's still no hospital that can take care of the president. The wife of the president, if you remember, also was rumored to be in Dubai not long ago for similar medical, you know, uh, uh, checkup. What exactly has stopped them from fixing or from equipping the, the, you know, the healthcare system in Nigeria to be able to attend to the president's needs? Um, at Tedo Peter's side, uh, yesterday it was um, on Twitter and he posted something about the $1.5 billion uh, that, was, um, that, it, that is meant to be used to fix the Port Harcourt refinery. And he said that that can build 12 world-class hospitals here in Nigeria at $125 million each. Um, but instead of doing that, you know, we want to spend that on fixing the refinery. And he, he suggested, instead of fixing the refinery, build 12 world-class hospitals, give our healthcare system some funding and some financing, get the private sector and, you know, PPV arrangements like we, you know, of course, we spoke about with regards to the, the um, express world, the roads in Nigeria, get the private sectors to fix refineries um, and, you know, save that money, use that money for something else, which to me you know, sounds really, really good. Um, but are we going to do that? You know, and by the time the current administration is living in 2023, will there be a hospital in Nigeria that can attend to the president's needs? Yes, Saoge, all valid questions, really. Uh, if, if poor Nigerians can't assess basic medical care, it doesn't seem rational. In fact, it's very selfish for you to fail to put... It's like a father who fails to provide, or parents, because you know, mom, moms and dads, you know, to contribute to the run of the family. It's like parents who fail to provide food for their families or for their children, and they go out there to eat in other people's houses. Mm. It just doesn't make sense. Absolutely. Why would you value yourself above the common Nigerian? It's, that's, that's action from someone who promised to be a president of everybody. He even said he's going to be a president of nobody. So yeah, well. I think we're pretty, we pretty much missed those clues. Anyway, uh, Off the Press is up next on The Breakfast. Do stay with us.